Brothers and sisters, friends and family, it is good to talk with you. It is good to sit and chat. It's been a while since we've had one of these kind of chats, and it's always fun to do these kind of chats because I learn a lot as I'm sitting here going through these scriptures, as I'm trying to decipher what I believe that they say. And these scriptures are up for debate on all of us, right? These Everything that is considered scripture should always be up for debate. We should always be able to take any part of scriptures and we should always say, hey, does this part of scriptures hold weight to other part of scriptures? Let me say, for example, when we have the words of Brother Shaul, Paul, as you would know him, who is attributed to writing a lot of the New Testament, when we take his words, and only his words, and by his words we have decided that the laws don't really have any application to our lives, we have learned by his words that we should judge that we should let no man judge us on the days that we should worship or the meats that we should eat. We know that based upon his words alone, or at least how we understand, that the laws are kind of just a. Uh, forgotten thing that we have them but we don't have them yet we should be with them but yet we should not be with them and so when we have these words which could be very very confusing in fact we have another apostle who was uh, the right hand man of our messiah you call him probably jesus his hebrew name is yahushua there were no j's in hebrew you can say Yash yahshua yeshua there's a, there's a couple different ways to say it, and the, and the meaning is salvation. And so we have the right-hand man of our Messiah, Mr. Kepha, Kepha, who is in English, I guess, is called Peter. Peter writes a warning to people about Paul. He says, be very careful with what you guys decipher and what you guys decide to figure out. Now, the big question then would be, how would we qualify what we think that we understand in some of these books that are written by Paul or attributed to Paul? How do we know if it's right? Well, this is the big conundrum. This is what you would call the Christian conundrum. Because in Christianity, we have been told by people we think are qualified, who dress up in suits, who sport sometimes nice cars, sometimes not, but they always show up on a Sunday and they stand before us in a higher position behind a pulpit with authority in a place that we are supposed to be receiving instructions. And these instructions are actually given to us on the wrong day because we're never ever told to worship on a, the day of the sun, the Sol Victus. But we have decided that's the day we're going to worship. So now we also hear from this same individual that the words of the creator of the universe don't mean anything. They are nailed to the very cross that they destroyed our Messiah's life with. It's on the cross. All these wonderful words of advice, the wonderful words of wisdom, Kodesh things that you will not find in any other doctrine anywhere across scriptures at all exists in the very first five books of scriptures, in the book of Genesis, in the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we learn amazing, tremendous things. We learn how to operate as a human being. We learn what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat, how we should behave, how we shouldn't behave. We learn about marriage. We learn about taking care of our kids. We learn about doing business deals and doing business deals evilly. We learn all sorts of tremendously good things. So if you are looking for a group of very dangerous people, it would be any religion that has no value on the first five books of scriptures. Now we have other religions that actually do care about the first five books of scriptures, but then they violate Deuteronomy 6.4, which says we should not add to 
or take away from the Torah. So if we have any instructions in our life, anything that goes against the first five books of scriptures, then we know we're erring. That is the fundamental beginning of the times and life where our creator dwelt among his created entities, where he walked with us during the day in a cloud and with us at night by a pillar of fire, where he rose a group of men who would minister to him for the people. He gave everybody a set of how they should operate, how they should act, how they should conduct themselves. And he says, I want you to do this for all generations. There's no expiration date on this. There's no exit to the Torah. The Torah isn't a set of laws. It is not a set of bondage. It is a set of lifeline guidelines that we should all be observing because they're very good information. They're very wise. They tell us things that we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know we shouldn't drink blood. But because of the Torah, we know that life is in the blood and it's an absolute abomination to drink the blood. And we'll be cut off from our people if we do so. It's not something we would do. But we don't know these things, these very, very important things, when we have the hand of Christianity or the hand of any so-called religion that is out there that tells you there's no value in the laws of our Creator. So if you want to tell if any religion of any kind is satanic or legit, look at the doctrine. If there is no focus on the commandments of our creator as being a part of your life, as being a part of a foundational cornerstone, as far as being the fundamental piece of your families and for raising your kids, then it's a fraud. It's a complete fraud. And you wouldn't want to hook your star to that wagon because that wagon is on its way beyond the narrow gate into the wide path of destruction. Our Messiah has given us a set of words. Our creator has given us a huge set of words. Between the combo, the father and the son, we get a very clear picture of what we need to be as a human being, how we need to operate and how we need to adjust our life so that we are obtainable for the kingdom people. The kingdom people aren't the people who are lawless. Matthew 7 not only says that you will go to hell if you are lawless once, but then our Messiah reiterates it twice and says, depart from me, you who are lawless, you who are in iniquity. The Christians don't know who what iniquity is because if you don't know the first five books of scriptures, you don't know what sin is. Sin is transgression of the Torah. That is what we will be based upon. And that is a amazing thing when you actually know the rule set for what eternity is based upon. So my encouragement to everybody is that we align ourselves into the way of our creator, into his ways. And this is what we're going to be reading today out of what I believe is the greatest English translation in a limited edition book that you can ever find. All the free copies are available at yahscriptures.com. Just put a .com at the end of Yah Scriptures. This book is available in a limited edition. It is a ginormous study guide. It's 3,153 pages, large print. This thing is nearly seven pounds. People seem to have a issue with the shipping, which it is a expensive shipping, but it's because it's a very, very large book. This is a study guide. We're going to be coming up with some carrying cases for these, which make that a little bit easier to transport. But there's free versions, and the version we're just about to read is right here. And this version is uh, the free version, which is available, again, at yahscriptures.com forward slash downloads. Or just go to yahscriptures, look at the, for the downloads. And this is for any kind of Google platform. If you're running a Google phone, TV, tablet, whatever that you have, it will run on every one of those. And it does not require internet. And there's no, um, there's it's free. Everything's in it free. <clears throat> now, what we're reading is we're reading out of the very last book of the book of, of Yah scriptures. It is the book of Khalidi. Um, some call it the book of the Naturium <clears throat> because it is when our Messiah is walking amongst his people. 
in an order of books that should probably have been Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Khalidi, or Khalidi before a couple different books. Um, this is uh, a lot of the same information that we get in the Besora, which is the good news, which is the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John um, combo that most people begin and they call the good news. And so what we're hearing here is we are hearing more of the words of our Messiah, um, advice from him, how we should act, what we should expect, what we should do when things of this nature come our way. And so let us begin. And again, much love to all of you guys for hanging out, for chit-chatting, and for reading scriptures. Here we go. 1022. Many will mock and scorn you, saying, fools, we have full stomachs and soft beds. We have everything for our comfort and needs. What have you? There is little to be said in reply. For wise men do not mock, knowing that gems of wisdom often fall from the lips of fools. Take no heed of these, for they suffer from a spiritual defect, an ailment blinding them to their own deficiencies while exaggerating the failings of others. Now, one of the very first things that we always get with our Messiah is great advice. And we live in a world where if you are a law keeper, if you are somebody that keeps the laws of our creator, the first pe thing people say, oh, you're a Jew. Because people do not understand that the, the, the religion of Judaism has a gazillion different books. Not only do they, they go beyond Deuteronomy 6.4 that says if we have something outside the Torah, they have hundreds of books beyond that where it has all sorts of different rules and regulations. And... So right out of the gate, it's, it's, a, it's really, really hard because people don't understand what Torah keeping is, what real Torah keeping is. Real Torah keeping is the book and only the book, right? Um, for for Yah Scriptures, it's, it's 103 books. From the front of the book all the way to the very end of the book, it is all the exact same message. If you will obey my laws, statutes, and commands, I will be your Elohim. And I'm talking in the, in the words of our Creator. He will be our Elohim and we will be his people. He has given us a signed document, a covenant. And if there's, if we have those rules and regulations and they are a, a front let be, between our eyes, as it, meaning if, if everything in life that we look through, we look through the eyes of the Torah and you can't look through life with the eyes of the Torah if you don't know it. And so you want to always study up on the Torah. And this particular, this particular app right here, if you go to home and click on Torah commands, we have the 158 or so, or roughly, that we can keep today. They're all listed up. And so when we are walking among people and they're mocking and scorning us, um, Messiah talks about that they, they, they suffer from a spiritual defect and always exaggerating the, the failings of others. That's modern day religions. That's modern. You could, you could apply this particular verse to everything in life. So what we do is, is, and you know, living on YouTube or living on all these social media platforms, people mock, people scorn. The Christians, they will laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh, especially when you, you, you try to encourage them not to eat swine, not to eat things that are going to hurt them and kill them. They, they laugh at you like you're, you're some sort of joke when all you're trying to do is simply help their health, help them, help them spiritually and physically. It's not a, it's not a, you're trying to take away their, their candy, but they believe that they, they are losing their, their, their pig candy. 23 goes on to say, do not offer bright jewels to dogs, nor place a string of pearls around the necks of swine, or they will be trampled into the ground. The beast will turn and rend you for not providing bones or husks. This is the same message we hear in the Besora. It doesn't change. What this means is when you are giving the truth to people, when they are mocking and scorning you, you can, you can only do so much, right? You're not, you can plant a seed and they can laugh you off and then probably something a decade later may happen in their life and they will come back to that, that little thought in their head from that moment when you were sitting there doing that. But if you continue on and, you know, you'll, you'll see this in YouTube you will find the, the, the Christians that will come on and they will, they will argue Paul. And it, when you mention anything about law keeping, it all goes, immediately it goes to Paul. And then I mentioned to folks that if Paul is your default, 
set of rules and regulations, and by default, he is your Elohim. He's your lowercase Elohim. He's your lowercase God. That makes people very, very angry. But am I telling a lie? Because if you believe the writings of a man who was not writing to you, who was not writing about something you wrote to him, and you're taking doctrine from something that you do not understand what the first letter that came to him even said, so you're basing your entire spiritual doctrine on the writings of a man, and then you'll laugh at people, right? If Paul didn't say it, oh, you, you, are, you are a fool, my friend. Oh, Paul, that is just such bondage. And then you go on and you ask them, say, what, what commands offend you? What, what commands? And just like my dear old mother says, all of them. I don't have to keep the commands because Jesus died and they're fulfilled. And it's the same programming that people have and when you first start breaking away from this programming and you start reading scriptures and your eyes open you realize how foolish it is and how amazing it is that we were able to actually have our eyes open and we didn't go to our graves mocking our creator and his ways because this is what we're going to be judged on we're going to be judged on the Torah. We're going to be judged on this book that most of us have had all of our lives or had the ability to read at some point, if you ever so care. So when we are giving our jewels to the dogs, and, and the jewels we have is the Torah, right? We have the same jewels that we have been given. We have been given a breath of life, a breath of spiritual life. When we have the Torah, because when you are Torah bound, all of a sudden this world it's far less, right? We know this world is what it is. We know this world is going to end the way it will. And this is our hopes and dreams is after this world's gone, right? Our hopes and dreams are not in this world. We're not supposed to be putting in money into this into this world system. That's why our Messiah and, and the, the all everybody says, don't keep putting money into this world system. Moths will, will, will eat it. The, the mold will corrupt it. It will not be the same. We need to be having this credit card in the Shemaim, in the Shemaim in heaven. We need to be getting our jewels now by fishing for men, teaching others, seeking our creator, seeking him in our life with every way possible. But when they laugh, when they, when they, when they give you, uh, you know, it, it's over and over and over and they just keep on keeping on, they just say, have a nice day. Much love to you. Um, I, I don't know what to say. You know, what do you say? Good luck. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the only hope they got is luck at that point because they, they denied the only path forward. Now, um, 24, it goes on. Philippos said to Yahushua, Adonai, you caution us against anger, yet you were not angry, yet were you not angry when a man beat his donkey with a rod? Very interesting question, right? Um, and this is something, again, we're going to learn about righteous anger. We're going to learn that it's not all bad anger. Not everything should just be forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. And we live in that, that so-called Christian world where the Christians love forgiving everybody. Um, they love praying for their unclean food, that, that our Creator will bless the unclean food somehow, that uh, the dirty will be made clean and we won't get sick. How do we deal with it? Messiah says this, Yahushua said, I warn you against anger among brothers or anger relating to yourself. All right, let's look at this. There, there's, let's look at this first before we go on because this is, these are these chunks of gold that we find in the words of our Messiah when he says things like this. Number one, I warn you against anger among brothers. Very, very important, right? Are we, are, we, are we doing what is right? First of all, let's define who is our brother, who is our sister. Messiah says those who are keeping the laws of our, our creator are our, our brothers, sisters, mothers. Those are our family, right? So right out of the gate, if those amongst us, the ones who are Torah keepers, um, what are we doing? You know, And I live in a all-male household, one female four males, three young youths, and um, these guys bang all the time. I mean, these guys bang their heads. They they uh, they rival each other. Um, <laughs> this, I always read scriptures, right? And so it's not just amongst ourselves. It's not just amongst our siblings. It's amongst our people, right? Brothers and sisters. Um, <clears throat> or anger relating to yourself. A lot of, lot of stuff to understand here, right? Anger relating to ourselves. What, what is this? There could be anything. There, there's a ton of stuff. 
we know that anger, well, there's science actually out there that, you know, as you are an angry person, as you hold these grudges, your body functions different. And we, we, we rage different and our, our pulse is different. Our heart beats different. Our minds work different. And this is why when we hold these grudges for years and years and years, usually it is us that gets completely annihilated. The other people don't even care. They've forgotten all about this. They, they, they're not letting it dwell in our lives, but here we are, right? We're angry and we have not let it pass. And we're angry for what, for what reason? Because we know that when we hold on to these grudges, regardless, that our creator is going to judge us based upon how we are acting, how we are forgiving. And so there's there's something to be said for for forgiving. Now, I, I know uh, another comment came in a while ago and, and somebody said, well, we don't have to forgive um, our like uh, those who are not Torah keepers. And that's, you know, there's there's some truth to that. Right. But. At the end of the day, anger will completely make your heart dark. It will affect you. It can affect you for decades. It can make your blood pressure off the roof. Once you forgive and forget and let it go and let it slide and be done with it, better things happen, right? Let it go. People do stupid things. Everybody does stupid things. People aren't always great with what they say. They People are, in fact, emotional tools when it comes to emotions and and it's it's not good so forgive and everything will change now continue on messiah says this there's a righteous anger which is justified in all things there are balances and limitations and to know these you have the books of wisdom oh okay right there we have the books of wisdom our messiah says that we should understand life based upon a a balance and limitations how do we know the balance and limitations because most of us don't know the Torah. That's the balance and limitations, right? We have a command, do not kill. That is our limitation, right? We know we can probably get angry, but when it comes down to striking down our fellow man, that's not what we're supposed to do, right? And so the balance and limitations is when you know the Torah, then you absolutely know if you're going to be breaking the Torah, that's the point of knowing the Torah. And so if you don't know the Torah, if you're just brand new to the Torah, guys, the first five books of scriptures are an incredible read. I would encourage everybody who's brand new to Torah to read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy five times. Go through it slowly. Take whatever time it takes. If you feel sleepy, go to it the next day. Don't, don't, don't read just to read, read to understand, and you will read a love letter that our creator has given to all of us that is amazing. So continuing on with this, if a man comes against you threatening harm, he is more dangerous if he is calm and silent than if he is unsteady with anger. <laughs> These are only things that our creator could say, our creator's son can say, right? Because he knows how his dad built things. And there's some, there's amazing understanding to this. Let's finish off this and let's talk about this amazing understanding. The silent biting dog is more to be feared than the barking one. Therefore, it is not in your own interest that I teach you self-control. So this is very interesting. This takes me back to a story that we had. We had a dog. We had his name is Little John and he was a Chihuahua. And this little dog um, bit everybody. I don't know why. He, he, has, he had some issues. He had, a, he had a lot of issues. And, um, he would just come out of everywhere and he, he bit, he bit people, um, this, and he, he wouldn't bark, right? It would be, a, it would be a bit and run right out of nowhere. We had another dog. We still have another dog. His name is Jerry and Jerry used to do this as well. And we're down here in a third world country and Spanish speaking, hundred percent Spanish speaking. And Jerry would come out of nowhere and just bite these guys in their rear. So we were sitting there with an electrician one time and all of a sudden he like spins around, looks down and Jerry's taken off. Jerry just took him right in the cheek and, and split. <laughs> you don't hear it. You know, the, the ones, the dogs that do the bit and run like this, they're very dangerous versus the dogs that are sitting there barking, letting you know their intent, right? Because you know, when a dog's barking or growling that there's something wrong, you probably shouldn't approach it or it's, it's, you got to calm them down. 
So the same thing our Messiah talks about when a man's coming at you, right? If somebody's sitting there just like, you know, in your face, in your grill, you know what they're capable of. You know you see them. But it's the guys that never say a word that are the killers, that are the, the silent killers or the scammers that do some evil, the great evil. You don't see it coming. It's the other bit and run. It's humanity's bit and run. And so I don't want to get too far into this. I think this was an amazing um, read that we had right here. Um, very much something that anger is, is one of these things that, guys, a lot of you guys think that that just because we're doing, you know, readings of scriptures and things like that, like we're, we're uh, uh, very Kodesh people or we're, we're sitting on our on our hill and our in our monk shaft that we're just we're, we're offering up prayers day in and day out. Guys, we're, we're humans just like everybody out there. One of the greatest issues that I have is, is probably patience and anger. And it's something I've had all my life. Where it comes from, I don't know. I'd probably have to sit down with a shrink to figure it out. I don't know. But it's one of these things that as I got older, and I have not perfected the art of not getting angry, but I've forgiven a tremendous amount of people that I sat there and held grudges on for years and years and years, they didn't even know it was just eating me up and it is it it was a life changer and it's one of these things that you know we are going to be judged upon things like our patience things like our anger things like our ability to handle situations without going completely crazy and that's the thing about father abraham right father abraham was that dude he was the, the fella that could handle all of this crazy stress, do all of this crazy stuff. And all accounts that we have is this dude was a killing soldier of Yah that was extremely meek, extremely humble, extremely uh, believing in the promises that our creator has given to him and to all of his lineage. And those same promises that they, he gave Father Abraham and Abraham are the promises that have been given to us. If we will simply obey the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, and I do say simply because when you know them and when you have them on your heart, mind, and soul, they become very simple. When you adjust your life to the kingdom road people, it becomes very, very easy. It's not something that you, sin can just slip in there and get you, and it does. I'm not saying you're going to be sinless, but what I'm saying is that you're per trying to perfect your walk in a Torah way that is, uh, that it makes our creator happy, that it makes him as a parent ecstatic, that his people, his creation, the ones he created have decided that they want to seek him. And when we take our eyes and when we put them on our creator, we put them on his word. And then we see his word made flesh and we put him on his son. And we know that his son is going to be our leader, but it's not going to be a leader for a lawless group of criminals. If you want to be a criminal in the eyes of our creator and his son, then simply don't obey the laws, statutes, and commandments that our creator has set forth to all of us for today and for all generations. That's what makes a rebel. And the world's made up of rebels. The world is made up of people that actively seek Satan versus seeking our creator. And by default, if you're not seeking our creator, then you're seeking the world. And there's no, there's no, there's no two ways. It's either cold or hot. It's either frozen or, or, or burning hot. We have to choose this day who we will serve. Are we going to seek our creator or are we going to seek this world? Nobody knows when we'll have our last breath. Nobody knows when it's going to be over. And now is the time right now to align our lives to a better life. The laws make our lives better. They make you a better person. If, if nothing else, they make you a better person and they will increase your health because you won't be eating roadkill and not knowing. Okay, guys. Much love to all of you. Big hugs to all of you. To everybody who made it this far. Hope you have a good one. I'm out.